to become mighty vessels i just saw an anointing rest on you this role in the name of jesus i don't know where you are but i pray may that grace now let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension in the name of jesus christ welcome to christocentric message on this channel you are going to get soul lifting messages faith-based content prayer drills and videos that would help you grow spiritually remember to subscribe to the channel like the video you are about to watch and comment on it stay blessed and ask him one more time to bless us with his word we remain students in the school of the spirit
We're not saying it to condemn them. They did their best. But one of the mistakes was that when Satan saw that then the Western world, he saw that some of these people were focused. There was no possibility of backsliding. One of the things he did was to give up on that generation. And while they were in the crusades, raising people from wheelchairs, they were in the crusades praying and fasting. They did not pay attention to their children. The devil deceived them to be so forward thinking. They forgot that one day they would die. They forgot that one day they would go. All it takes to destroy what you have done is one generation of neglect. Just one generation of neglect. And you can zero down on all your sacrifice for many years. When you read modern history, you will think they are lying. When they tell you the people who stepped upon the soils of the Western world, the things they did, you will marvel and wonder why the level of decadence today. The devil has always used this strategy. This is why we are celebrating this ministry. Do you know why? Because the fathers, the mothers were prayer warriors. Some of them were not educated, but my goodness, they would turn every plate upside down and pray and fast. They had encounters with Jesus. But Satan knew that he may not be able to make these people live the things of God. Please help those under the anointing. Just pay attention. And then what he did was to come to the little children, the ones they were calling babies, the ones they were calling teenagers. Oh, don't mind their focus. Let me tell you, whoever grows with you is the one you become loyal to. Nobody will show up one day and expect a generation to be loyal to you if you did not grow up with them. Are we together now? Those babies today are the presidents of nations. Those babies today are the captains of industry. So Satan was patient for about 30 years and agree with them. Now all the people who could stand for God have transited in glory. And now there is a generation that did not know God. Let me tell you this. No matter how impactful you are, you are a failure if the generation behind you does not become an amplification of what God gave you. The real legacy is not your signs and wonders. The real legacy, no matter what students you are on campus, some of you are about to graduate. Have you seen this happen in the campus? That there will be a set of people who are on fire. They love God, they are praying. Then the devil will make them to focus on their personal achievement and forget about a transference of graces. They won't mentor the ones coming. They won't build anybody. Empire mentality makes them to keep enjoying. The graduate, you will suddenly find two or three years with no one who is spiritual. And it brings the fire on that campus back to zero. Occultism will now grow again. Drugs will now grow again. Until God now begins to pay stakingly and pick your men from 100 level, 200 level. Then he will now build a team again. Then they will forget to pass the baton. The real measure of a man's success is not your personal achievement. Your personal achievement gives you the credibility to be listened to, the credibility to be received. But your real legacy, let me tell you my brothers and my sisters, your real legacy is what happens after you leave that phase of life. As young as we look, if we focus on ourselves and we continue a few decades from now, we will make the mistakes that others have made to. And while we are celebrating Joshua Selman, if all that happens is Joshua Selman, if Christ tarries one day, whether we like it or not, we will also join them among the clouds of witnesses. But what we leave behind, look what Jesus did. Jesus said, look, I'm only here for three and a half years left. And he said, there's no time for celebrity. Twelve, where are you? Every day, mentorship, fire, teaching, opening them to the things of God. Mentor 72, send them for their spiritual IT. They return back and say, wow, even the demons, hey, no time for celebration. Let's go back to the class. There is a lot to return. When Jesus died, when he resurrected, if I were Jesus, I would go to heaven and say, just to let you know that 
what I am really Jesus. He didn't have time for that. As soon as he resurrected, he said, where are you? 120. We have lecture. We have, I have 40 more days before the Holy Ghost comes. And there are some things I've not taught you. My curriculum is not finished yet. Sit down and learn. So every opportunity you have, don't let the devil deceive you that you are young. The child of yesterday is the king of tomorrow. The young man of yesterday is the elder of today. Time is mysteriously deceptive. Everyone seated here for those who are not students, one day they were on campus. One day they were young people. You will open your eyes and you are not doing it for yourself. While you are tired here, remember your children, whether you have them or not. Remember them. I'm standing for my children. I'm standing for my family of 30 people with nobody on fire. I'm standing as that altar, the one who is representing the purposes of God. Are we together? Let me tell you this. One of the indices that I use as a measure to communicate profound honor and regard to a person and a ministry is the ability to forget about themselves and their personal achievements and look at the generation coming. It is selfish to focus on all the crowds and everything. No matter how anointed we are, we will not always be at this level. As footballers, once upon a time there were names in this country when you call goalkeepers, footballers, are we together? I'm not looking down on them. But the reality of life is that time Everything is a measure of time. Today it is Joshua Selman standing here. No matter how anointed I am, just like our fathers of faith, a day will come, we will focus on the generation we were sent to. It is not every generation we were sent to. Where you are sitting now, a day will come, you will not sit there again. It will be someone else, maybe your children who will sit. And if Joshua Selman and Co. did not do a good job, they will be seated, but there will be no preacher. We will still be alive preaching to the generation that we are sent to. And David served God in his own generation. May it never be that our children will not have choices that still direct them. Can we pray for the generations coming? Don't say you are too young. I don't know why God decided to take us this way. But well, lift your voice and pray. Think generational. Pray for your campus. Lord, I will not graduate the way I met things. I came and I met cultism. I came and I met decadence. Grant me the grace to raise people who will continue the works of righteousness and power. Some of you are done. Some of you have businesses. Some of you have younger ones. You have siblings. Succession is not something that happens without being taught. Succession is the secret of continuity. The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses commit thou to faithful men who will commit them to others. The Christianity we receive today is because people brought it and they were good at succession. No matter how successful you are, if you do not understand succession, there will be no continuity to your impact. This is one of the secrets of the Jews. You go to Israel today, they have mastered succession. Corporately speaking, you go to the West. From a secular standpoint, they got it well. You will see restaurants that are 130 years old. You go to Europe, you will see buildings that are almost 300 years old. Succession. But in our nation, sadly, and in many parts of our continent, there is hardly second or third generation of anything. A father will labor and do everything, build business, serve God, sponsor missionaries, 
only for the man to die because he did well, but he did not think of the children. And they will become a very irresponsible child who in five years will destroy the legacy of almost half a decade. Hello, Kim Madonna. So I'd like us to examine the prayer ministry for a few minutes 
so that we can rise to the level and the standard in the spirit, the standard of stature that will help us to be worthy representations of the kingdom and of the Christ. It's one thing to desire to walk in holiness. It's one thing to desire to walk in righteousness. It's one thing to desire to walk in power. It's one thing to desire to walk in wisdom. But it takes more than desire. There is in this kingdom, we never do anything in the strength of the flesh. To desire is only human, but there is an embracing of the spirit. Please listen carefully. In this kingdom, the effort of the flesh will only end men in futility. You will desire, you will will to do it. But if the grace that picks you up to that level in the spirit is not there, you will consistently fall short of your expectation. Is God speaking to us? Many of us desire even an approba when you ask him. Or maybe when you meet someone who smokes or drinks and you sit with him and say, look the kind of life you are living. Are you really happy about this? In all honesty, sometimes some of you, you have them around and they will tell you sincerely, I, I don't like this kind of life. Is that true? And once you talk to them, you will think they have repented. They will never do anything again because of the level of brokenness. One day later, they are at the police station again. Because in this kingdom, look up please, let me teach you, pay attention to what I'm teaching you this afternoon. In this kingdom, demons are real. In, in this kingdom, Satan is real. There is a real devil that has found to see that your life will never rise to God's expectation. Spirits are real. Wickedness is real. The Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that there are forces and that not every force is godly. Spirits that will fight to see that your prayer life never becomes anything to write home about. There are spirits that will fight to see that the prophecy upon your head from birth never comes to be fulfilled. Oh, when you were giving birth to a prophet came and said, this lady is going to be like Esther in the palace. And you are not the only one who spirit also had it. And they vow and covenant that for as long as we are here, this lady will not rise as a light in this family. Please listen to me. No matter how modern we are, no matter how advanced we are, no matter how educated and how technological we get, the reality that is in the realm of the spirit is that powers are real and they are not sleeping, they are not folding their arms. The Bible says Satan moves to and fro, is it in your Bible? Like a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour. There are over seven point something billion people on earth and you will be surprised how many people are under the siege of Satan. Spirits are behind the tragedies in the life of men. I once had a story very many years ago of a young man who did well, finished school, collected his certificate. I think he was on a bike going home. And one of these trucks that carry products just came with speed and crushed that person, even climbed the neck. He died there and there. And that was the only one who was rising in that family. Don't tell me it was a coincidence. Spirits are real. What of people who read and even conduct tutorial for others? And then when it's time for exam, they sit down there as if they've never read. Until they fail, they are taking their back and they now remember the answers. Wickedness is real. Though. Please listen to me when I tell you this. Our world is immersed in a web of evil and wickedness and the bible knowing this made a provision for the saints to be able to navigate through the times of evil navigate through the times of wickedness of witchcraft and all of these orchestrations ultimately the victory comes through the sacrifice of christ but the administration of that victory requires engaging the even though the victory is finished in Christ, 
as far as the Bible tells us, the administration of that victory in your life here and now will be predicated on your understanding and engaging the forces of the kingdom. Just because the victory has been won does not mean it will automatically be made manifest in your life. Forever, O oh Lord, it says, your word is set to in heaven, not in your life. It takes engaging the forces of victory that have been given to the saints. And one of it is the ministry of prayer. Do you know what it means to grow in a place where you know they hate you from the king there? Herod did not hide his own. Go and search for that child that I will come and worship him. And he was negotiating so that they would kill him. To the point that the angels, Joseph, God used dreams, he used angels to hide Jesus. When Herod died, he said, now you can go. The one who seeks your child is gone. Do you know what it means to walk in a world where you suspect that anybody can kill you at any time? Your life and your ministry is not received. And yet Jesus was able to rise to that standard and he finished strong. That means there is something that we need to learn. Walk with me for a few minutes as we explore a few principles that can help us rise to that stature through the ministry of prayer. Number one, the Bible lets us know Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. Please give it to us, Matthew chapter 10. Please write it down. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Very interesting information. Jesus is talking now, not a prophet, not an archangel. I send you, let me define for you the territory that I'm sending you to. You are an innocent sheep. You see, a sheep does not have horns. A sheep does not have a system of defense. The only system of defense of a sheep is a shepherd. So he's saying, I send you as sheep. But a wolf and a sheep does not lie down in the same place. When a wolf sees a sheep, the assignment is to tear it into pieces and eat it. And yet the God of all flesh sends us as sheep among wolves. That means the tendency to see your destiny go down as far as this one is concerned is 100%. The tendency to see that although you rise, you never amount to anything is 100%. The tendency to see that tears and sorrow never depart from your life is 100%. The devil is that determined and God did not leave us in the dark. He says, therefore, on account of this information, be as wise as serpents. One of the few times in scripture where God will recommend people to learn the wisdom of the servant and to be as harmless as doves. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 19. 1 John chapter 5, Apostle John was giving us another information about the world that we live in. If you can see it projected, please read. Otherwise, I'll read it for you. And we know that we are of God. Uh -huh. And the whole world, the Bible says, lieth in wickedness. The whole world means Abelkuta, means Lagos, means Kano means my jewelry, means America, means Europe, means Asia. The entire world is immersed in wickedness, the Bible says. Very instructive information. One more scripture. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 41. Again, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, Are we there? It says, watch and pray. Jesus again is giving us an instruction. Watch. The word watch there means be discerning. The word watch there means be vigilant. The word watch there means be wise. 
The word watch there means be courageous. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Why? Because there is a weakness in all men. The spirit is willing, willing to be successful, willing to be great, willing to serve God, willing to live a fruitful life. But the limitation is that the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. Look up, please. The flesh is weak does not necessarily talk about sin alone. Listen to what I'm telling you. It is a limitation that is in all humans that by reason of wearing a mortal body, there is only so much we can do. Are we together now? There are times that you know you should pray. The Holy Ghost is telling you, arise and pray. But the reality of your tiredness, you know you are tired for a legitimate reason. The flesh is weak. There are times that you know you should serve God. But this joblessness is now 10 years no job. And the truth is that as people begin to mock you and talk against you, at first you say it does not matter. The flesh is weak. This subject of flesh is something we have to trust God for grace and examine and deal with seriously. Most believers focus just on the issue of sin. The issue of sin has been resolved through the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. That you can obtain that grace and that righteousness and the grace grants you the ability to walk sincerely in true holiness and righteousness, the Bible says. But for flesh, it says I crucify it daily, not monthly, not weekly. Listen carefully. You can be Finish his assignment. 
He said, my meat is to do the will of him that has sent me and to finish it. When he was on that cross, hallelujah, he said, it is finished. I finished it. I fought the, the fight. Paul, when at the end of his life, he said, I have, I have fought a good fight of faith. What a powerful testimony for a man to say, in spite of the wickedness of men, I still finished. Lord, I have finished the blueprint of my assignment. You stand and look at it. I remember when Billy Graham was preparing to leave. One of the few men who finished his assignment, there was nothing else for him to do. He just sat down and was waiting for the day the Lord would take him. And with glory and honor, he transited. Look at Jesus. He finished his assignment, raised those to succeed him, and levitated in their presence to heaven. And while they watched in fear, the angels came and said, Why do you look up? This same Jesus you see is going to come back again. The same way you have seen him go. There are many ways, listen carefully, that God helps men. I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. From whence cometh my help? That was a question. Then it says, My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let me show you one of the ways that God helps us in this kingdom, regardless the arsenals of darkness. When you find this secret that I teach you this afternoon, you can guarantee that you will finish strong. You can guarantee that after 30 years, you will still be standing, serving the purposes of the kingdom. When all the dust rises and falls, you will still be standing and serving the purposes of the kingdom. Are we Romans 8, 26. Shila Sambra Haskida Bakasudem Rendeke Dibala Likewise, the Spirit also helped Likewise, this Holy Ghost that was given to us is more than a Pentecostal phenomenon. Likewise, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit also helped our infirmity. The word translated infirmity there does not mean sickness. It means bodily limitation. The limitation that comes to you by reason of wearing a mortal body. That the Holy Ghost was sent to us because God knew that outside of him there is no chance of our survival. Not in this wicked world. Are we together? The Spirit helped our infirmity. What is the infirmity? We are limited. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercessions with groanings which cannot be uttered. Next verse. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. For he makes intercession for the saints according to the will. I know is that even though I am limited 
as a human being. There is the supernatural spirit that was given to me and he's provided a mechanism that if I engage it, no matter my limitation, the Holy Ghost who sees this entire span of earth, he knows how to direct me to pray such that I will eventually imagine victory. Now, thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph. Jesus, your Jesus seemed very limited. That was why when he wore this human body before he started ministry, as soon as he was ready to start ministry, the first thing that happened was that he went to meet John the prophet, the Baptist. When John baptized him, listen, he had not preached any sermon. The heavens opened and the Holy Spirit came and descended upon him. And the next thing that happened was that he was driven to the wilderness. He prayed for 40 days, 40 nights. Satan came to tempt him and he defeated Satan with it is written. The Bible says he returned in the power of the Spirit. Suddenly his faith went about. And when persecution arose for the word's sake, every time the Bible says he will retreat from people and he will go to pray. Why should the Son of the living God pray? There's no mention of him praying when he was in heaven before he came. But the moment he became a man, he had to pray. Luke 18 verse 1. Please learn this secret that I show you as we pray. Luke 18 verse 1. The Bible says, And he spake a parable to them to this end that men, prayer is not for those in trouble, prayer is not for prayer warriors, prayer is not for ministers of the gospel, prayer is for men. The mind that you are carrying a body, prayer is mandatory for your survival. It is not something for those who want to go into ministry or those who think they want to walk in power. No. He spake in parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So when the tiredness of his crusades come upon him, when the discouragements that attempt to come from the scribes and Pharisees, he will retreat and pray and pray and pray and pray and return back with strength and fire and vigor. The disciples did not know what was the secret of his consistency. They were discouraged. They would run away today. They would argue among themselves. Do you know why? They did not have a mechanism to draw strength. Until that time, it was not yet given to them. So discouragement was the order of the day. There were all kinds of carnal things among them, arguing for position, who would sit at the left and right. Jesus, when are you going to conquer Caesar and Herod and give us a share of this inheritance? And said, look how carnal you people are. We are discussing kingdom matters and what you are thinking of is this. To the point that they even got their mother, James and John, to come and help them negotiate the position in advance so that there's no argument when Jesus becomes a victim. They were arguing about who was the greatest. They were arguing about leadership. At a point in time, they now became angry and said, Master, we have left all you. Don't think we've forgotten it. We have left all to follow you. What is our stake in this? Because they were weak. That was the weakness of the flesh playing out. Even Jesus got to a point in Gethsemane when he was becoming sin. For the first time, the Holy Ghost was going to leave him to continue his journey of his passion unassisted by the spirit of grace and he cried he cried and cried and cried father if it's possible take this cup of me that's to tell you the reality if jesus got to a point where he was weak do you know what i love about the bible it leaves everything there it doesn't doctor anything and hide it if jesus cried to write it there if Jesus was victorious, he would write Your Jesus, the son of the living God, was tired. And he said, Father, I never knew it was going to be this hard. Is it possible for us to renegotiate salvation? And then he just said, no, nevertheless, not my will. That's the strength to continue. But your will be done. You read about the disciples. 
read about how most of them were killed and martyred. Some of them were turned upside down and they were hung. Some of them were hung in a transfer session. Some of them were fed to animals. And yet in modern history, even at the point of death, the Holy Spirit, He can give you strength and courage beyond your imagination. That with this Holy Ghost, you can stand in front of the board and see two carryovers and say, but Lord, this was not the plan. And yet in the midst of it, you will still find strength and be comforting someone else. And they say, so how will you do with your life? Now you say, no problem. I know that all things work together for good. And they say, shouldn't you be crying? And while other people are saying, what a shame. You claim that you serve God all your life. Where is your God that will not help you? You say, no problem. I will pass through this with honor and nobility. I know that the one extra year, something is going to happen that will change my life. There is stamina when you understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now, please listen to me. The subject of being filled with the Holy Ghost, with evidence of praying in tongues, is not a Pentecostal phenomenon. No, no, no. This is not something for Pentecostals. This is not something for men of God. It was an advantage that God gave believers. He says you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes. Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 2, we do not see power, but we see tongues. That means there is a relationship between tongues and spiritual power. If he said, he never said you shall receive tongues. In Acts chapter 1, you shall receive power. But in Acts chapter 2, now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Bible says, they were gathered together with one accord, in one accord. Suddenly, there was a sound, like it was in Ezekiel 37. It came and filled the whole room. And the Bible says they saw cloven tongues that were as of fire. It came and rested upon every one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, and they began. So there was a day it was not their experience. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. When the people gathered in the day of Pentecost and said, Peter, what is happening? This is that prophecy that one day in the last days it shall come to pass, I shall pour out my spirit. He began to quote from Prophet Joel to tell him this is that experience that brings us strength. By the time we get to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, please give it to us. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2. Paul was mentoring the church in Corinth. And here's what he had to say. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, he said, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit? He speaketh what? Mysteries. And Paul said those mysteries is what he calls the hidden wisdom of God. That none of these princes had known. For had they known it, they would not crucify the Lord of glory. That when we pray in the spirit are scattered as what we are saying is. He says in the realm of the spirit we are birthing realities. We are praying mysteries. Verse 4 of the same scripture. The Bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Watch this. If you are trusting God to rise to that level of stature and stamina, one of the weapons that brought Jesus to that place, because the Bible says Jesus increased, meaning he to experience transitions. He increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. He said, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue and defiant himself. Yesterday no longer becomes a witness tomorrow. Show me a Christian who just gets born again, weak and timid, with all kinds of family yokes and causes to destroy him. Expose that person to a proper system of mentorship. Let that person come under a strong apostolic grace and prophetic grace. Let that person be filled with the Holy Ghost and be encouraged to build himself. I show you fire on his way to be ignited. No matter how weak and no matter how timid. You may start as a weak person, but just keep praying. One day becomes one week. One week becomes one month. Every night you go to pray. While you are praying, you are even tired yourself. Do you know what you are doing? 
you are attracting to your consistency the spirit of prayer and supplication. The Holy Ghost, that dimension of his ministry is being exposed to you. One night, it will do you like a dream. You will pray as before, and the grace will fall on you. You will do a night to dream only you there. From that day, no matter what happens, prayer will no longer be by your strength again. You have been carried by the wings of the Spirit. The grace for supplication is upon you. That your bodily weakness will no longer be able to swallow you up again. It is at that point, listen, all the other gifts of the Spirit are activated by your consistency of praying in tongues. Believe me, this is my office. I know what I'm saying. All other gifts of the Spirit, prophecy, word of knowledge, it is at the instance of your expanding your organs of interaction in the realm of the Spirit. You build stamina. All of a sudden, you sense something is wrong with my mind. I don't know why, but I for two days now, I've been sensing that all is not well. You pick up a call and call her. Mommy, are you fine? She tells you, how did you know? I didn't want to tell you, but it's like I've been down. You tell her it is the devil. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that power be broken. Discernment. Many believers are dull of discernment. The devil comes slowly and comes to destroy us. We do not have the seeing eye. We do not have the hearing ear. Do you know why? Because we have neglected this precious gift given to us. If this gift was useful to make Jesus the model that we now celebrate, without the Holy Ghost, let me tell you, even though he was the Son of God, he never would have been able to survive it. The world is too evil to use just intellect and use strength. It is the ability to pray in the spirit that will give you strength. One year there is no money at home, yet you are praying. You hold the hands of your wife and say, let's pray. We are completely confused. We don't know what to do. It's in the place of prayer direction will come. Zikas, Kopra, Kato, Ziakata, Reketo, Sheneketea. Five minutes becomes one hour. Can I encourage you? Let me tell you this. My dear people, now you are not as busy as you should. One thing with prayer is that truly there are plans in the realm of the spirit. You can send incense of prayer to wait for your future there. I know this. I know what I'm saying. For some of you, you don't know why God is saying cut away from some of these nonsense activities and spend time to pray. A day will come when you are breastfeeding children. You may not have that time to pray the way you always wanted again. Everybody here who is working or busy will tell you that 10 years or 20 years ago, the liberty you had in terms of time, you don't have it now again. Are we together? Time. So now is the best time to invest in prayer. You find one corner every time you are praying. Why are you praying this kind of prayer? Lord, I know where you are taking me to. And I'm, I'm praying that prayer. Not just give me tea. Not just give me prayer. This is prayer for edification. This is prayer for warfare. You are sending in prayer as an usher to wait for you in your future. That what killed my father will not kill me. What killed my loved ones. They rose up just like me. But the spirit stood and stopped them. I'm not going to allow that to destroy my life. I saw it destroy their ministries. And I'm standing now to send an incense for prayer. This is more than just giving tea. This is more than morning devotion. Wake up, Africa. There are real demons in our continent. It will take power to last in today's world. the first time I saw a demon spirit in my life I was praying <laughs> let me tell you this the day you take prayer seriously the realm of the spirit will start giving you a feedback you will know that something you are doing is touching the realm of the spirit in reality that night it was at the back of a generator I'm not talking of visions, physically like I'm looking at you. I'm 
praying and all of a sudden I go to the back of the generator and who here is this spirit standing and he tells me get back I didn't even know when subconsciously I started praying from that day the reality of the demonic realm I had read about it I had read it from scripture but my eyes had seen it I knew that this thing is real Except you are given to prayer, everything I'm saying remains as a parable. You will never know. There are dimensions in the spirit where one day you are praying, the blueprint of your family's destiny will be open. That's the day you will see that your loved ones were not supposed to be small. So this is why marriages don't happen in our family. So this is why people rise and God will say, now that you have paid the price to build power with me, let me give you authority in the spirit to deal with that situation. And now you begin to deal with that situation. He spoke a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Listen, don't you think if they fought your father and your mother, they will leave you. Say unto God, how terrible are thou in your ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you.
from my secret place. I'm going to pray with you this afternoon. Not laziness. Don't, I'm not talking of the kind of prayer where you are looking around, typing, punching phones. We are talking of a matter of destiny. Find a corner. Hold on to the folds of the old.
Listen to me. Listen. In the name of Jesus. Now listen. Hear me. It said, self talk in the name of Jesus. You will marvel and wonder what happens to you when you pray this prayer. Say, Father, I decree that every planting, every altar, every orchestration of darkness against my life, my family, my destiny, against prophecy over my life, right now, it comes from that judgment. Open your mouth and begin to pray.
tomorrow. The spirit of complacency, the spirit of conformity. I have to be like the rest. You are going to pray and say, Father, fresh fire on my altar. The fellowship I used to have with you that I no longer enjoy. Oh, let there be a restoration of God. A restoration of hunger. A restoration of passion. Lift your voice and pray.
to a two at one point. There are many of you, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, calling you back to the place of intimacy.
that by the time you are ready to go back to your homes, your campuses, your places of work, you will go back returning as infernals of fire. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. In Jesus' name. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and lekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.